So beginning today's show, grocery stores continue to be stocked with food, but disruptions in the supply chain are being felt through some parts of the ag industry. I spoke with Darren Newsom, president of Darren Newsom Analysis, about that and got some updates from him on what else he's tracking in the markets. Last week, I heard something that I never thought I would hear in my lifetime. There's no demand for bacon. Pork bellies were being loaded on, and this is from a good source that I have out in the industry. Uh, pork bellies were being loaded onto rendering trucks at the packing plants. That to me, was just astounding. And then you add in the fact that, again, from the same source, that uh, anything uh, last week, anything over 150 pounds wasn't going to be bought. This, uh, this week, anything, uh, anything less than 220 pounds wasn't going to be bought. So we're seeing it in the pork. We're seeing it in the cattle where last week we saw cash bids pulled uh, at, the, at the end of the week. So we are having some supply chain upheavals here. We're, you know, we're having, you know, positive cases coming in at some packing plants. So I've heard, I haven't heard of many closing down, but there have been some positive cases. I know there was one plant in Canada that got shut down. So there is that threat. And it's certainly at least last week leaked over into the futures market and into the cash. Darren, what's been the big area of concern producers have right now? And what advice do you have for them? The biggest concern out there, and it's almost commodity wide, is demand. You know, we don't, you know, demand for corn is down on all three categories. Soybeans, we don't have any export demand. We have good crush demand because of the amount of, of cattle on, on feed and hogs as well, uh, since we don't have any DDGs, because we have ethanol plants shutting down. So demand is the key issue. Wheat's still doing okay, uh, but even its demand starting to slow the livestock sector as a whole. Demand, again, as we just talked about, is, is being hurt. So as we're heading into planting season, the biggest issue out there is demand. How are we going to rebuild demand? And where is this new interest going to come from? I don't see it happening. Uh, if we look at corn, again, the best chance we have is for feed demand. If we look at soybeans, the best demand that we have is crush demand. Uh, but that's going to come at the expense of some of, uh, of, of the you know, DDGs for, uh, for corn. So I don't see any new demand avenues out there. The U.S. dollar remains strong. Brazilian real remains weak. So, you know, there's not going to be this sudden rush by the world's largest buyer to start looking at U.S. commodities unless something dramatic happens. And right now, I just don't see that happening. Going back to soybeans for a second, and you mentioned crush, is that a reason why the futures for soybeans aren't as bearish as some other commodities? We've, you know, the last week or so, the last, I'm going to say the last couple of weeks, we did see some spillover demand from the soybean meal market, but then soybean meal collapsed as well. The funny thing about soybeans is, is it doesn't look as bad, but if you look at the big picture, if you look at the cash market, if you look at everything taken into account together, then soybeans have actually lost just as much, if not more ground than corn and Soybeans are still projecting a much more bearish, the cash soybean market is still projecting a much more bearish supply and demand situation than corn. The interesting thing about corn is, is we were really, we were testing the 2018 low here uh, early this week and we held it. We saw bases start to firm. So that was one bullish sign is that we did not take out the 2018 low in the cash corn market. So Darren, long term, would you recommend holding onto corn or soybeans? What do you think the opportunities are? You know, what's really strange after everything that I just said, if I look at the forward curve of those two markets, corn versus soybeans, and this is just crazy to me, this is something I'm still trying to wrap my head around, the more bullish long-term structure of a market is soybeans. Hmm. I can't. I can't justify it if I look at any of the fundamentals, but if I look at just the forward curve and I look at how basis has been doing, the long term, you know, longer term, the more bullish market still continue, continues to be soybeans.